1979, Dave Potter, of course, saddened everyone associated with the sport, one that he loved so much and adorned with such credit. Well, the example that he and the other riders set makes this sport such a satisfying and exciting one to spot. And the man who is set to take over the title is Ron Haslam. He leads the table with an impressive 28 points over Wayne Gardner. Corky Ballington is third and Graham Wood fourth, and then follow Barry Sheen, Mick Grant, Bob Smith and Steve Parrish. Now, there are bonus points for this final round, with 35 points going to the winner, down to two points for the man in 10th place. And so, as you can see, Wayne Gardner could snatch the title if he wins, and Ron Haslam is so out of luck as to miss a place in the first 10. They're already on that warm-up now, so let's join our commentators, Phil Reed, and leading off, Peter Neal. At Grand's Hatch, the riders now on their warm-up lap almost completed for the final round of the Motorcycle News Superbike Championship of 1981. And the man most likely to win is Ron Haslam. The position is, if Wingard Wayne Gardner wins, Ron Haslam has to only finish in seventh place to win the championship. And that's the man who has been so close on no fewer than three occasions to winning the championship here at the final round at Brands Hatch, only to have it snatched away from him almost on the last corner of the last lap. Back from sunnier climbs is Ron Haslam. He's been to uh, South Africa where he had a third and a sixth place in Super bike races at Kalami and in Kalani. That Kalani, of course, in South Africa. So we've got a tremendous lineup here with not only the British champion, Bob Smith, who clinched it, but also the French champion, Marc Fantin, who'll be racing on that machine number 37. He clinched the championship only last Sunday. And there's Wakefield's Mick Grant, uh, sixth in the standings at the moment with 53 points, the winner of this Motorcycle News Superbike Championship back in 1975. With me is Phil Reed. Phil, conditions, I think you'd agree, are just about perfect. Well, uh, it might be for you sitting up here, Peter, but <clears throat> actually for the uh, riders, it's quite cold today. I don't think we'll see any lap records broken, although the circuit is, uh, is dry. There are a few black clouds about, so they'll be watching them very carefully. But um, <clears throat> there's a hell of a, an exciting... That's the only man who can win the championship away from Ron Haslam. That is number 30, Wayne Gardner, the Australian, riding the big 1,103cc Marawaki Kawasaki. As I say, he has to win outright, and Ron Haslam has to finish in seventh place or better for Ron to win the championship. That's the lineup, uh, number eight, Cork Ballington, you can see. That's number 37, one of the French riders. Number 37, Marc Fantin, the French champion, the front row of the grid. The seconds ticking away, 20 laps, points at stake, and away they go for the first of these 20 laps. And it's Ron Haslam and Mick Grant certainly have made a very, very good start indeed. But it's not Mick Grant or Ron Haslam that leads as they sweep around, panic them for the first time up now to Druids in slow first gear corner, which they take at about 30 miles per hour. The tricky part of the race, the early laps, because this is where the tires perhaps not quite warm enough and problems can be caused. Phil Lowe, it was a very clean start, and that is Dennis Isle at number 12, who is the early leader. Well, yeah, fantastic start. It's nice to see them get away cleanly, you know, to, uh, to open this very exciting race where the, the first uh, seven riders are only covered by a second. So, uh, I expect to uh, see actually Ron has him biding his time on this very difficult, demanding circuit. Here. I would think that Ron will be riding carefully because he knows that Wayne Gardner's got to win and he has only had to stay in seventh place. So he's lying in second place at the end of the first lap. Dennis Island is the leader. Number two, Ron Haslam in second place. Mick Grant is well up there as well. But Wayne Gardner of the Marawaki Kawasaki is way down the field. Dennis Island into Druids for lap number two. Ron about 30 miles an hour. Haslam and Grant following them. That's Ireland, then Haslam, then Grant, then Keith Hewitt, Cork Ballington, Steve Henshaw. 30 was Wayne Gardner, 5 was John Newbold. 19 was Bob Smith. And now on the Cooper Strait into Surtees Bend and Clearways, Dennis Ireland still leading Dennis Ireland, the New Zealander. Uh, had a 13th place in the junior TT in the Isle of Man this year, but not the success he had a couple of years ago. But he started off like the proverbial rocket, and it's Rocket Ron Haslam who is lying in second place on the very big Works Honda, the 1123cc Honda, having a go on the inside, and Ron Haslam is determined, I think, possibly to win this particular round, even though he only has to finish in seventh place. He's got in front, but Dennis Island having a go back on the inside of Druids, but I think Haslam has the line. They're in very close company. Haslam holds the line, 
and a change in third place now. Up into third place is number 16, Keith Ewan, who uh, is rumored to be riding one of the World Suzuki's. Well, Peter, Dennis Arnold is on the 500 uh, Suzuki, which is quite uh, a bit less powerful, but easier to control around uh, this circuit against uh, Ron Haslam's 1123cc machine, which develops about 140 brake horsepower. It's quite difficult. Look at this now. Right around the... No, it's not going to make so they're becoming an added complete three laps, and it's very close racing Ireland having a go. Haslam took a wide line there on clearways, but the speed of the Honda took him through safely. Keith Ewan up there in very close company also, and Cork Ballington with the green leathers is in fourth place. Cork by third place overall in the championship at the moment, but that's the first three as they come to Druids on lap number four. Ron Haslam from Langley Mill. Then we have uh, number 12, Dennis Ireland from New Zealand. And number 16, Keith Ewan from Wollaston. Keith Ewan, the British champion of 1979. Cork Ballington, then Steve Henshaw. They're in fourth and fifth places. And the sixth rider is Mick Grant. So that's the first six. But there's first, second, and third. And Keith Ewan closing rapidly on Ron Haslam, who's leading. That's Haslam and Dennis Island really having a go on the outside at Clearways. That is absolutely fantastic attempt, but not uh, quite enough. Ron Haslam held on and Keith Ewan now having a go on the inside. This is tremendous, the first three, and Keith Ewan has taken over second place from Dennis Island, and now he has Ron Haslam in front of him. Ron Haslam leads as they swoop down Paddock Bend into the bottom of that dip. And Keith Ewan having a go on the inside at Druins, but no, it's Ron Haslam still leading. We're on lap number five now. Four laps have been completed. They're round through it safely. And down now to Graham Hill Bend, which are taking you round about 90 miles an hour. And the leader there still is Ron Haslam. In second place, number 16 is Keith Hugh. And third is number 12, Dennis Ireland. The fourth rider was number eight. That's Cork Ballington with the green leathers, but a change in position have we here? No, it's still Haslam. Coming up to quarter distance, five laps completed. They're the first three in very close company. Haslam, Hewan, Ireland, and Ballington. They're the first four. The fifth rider looks like Steve Henshaw, and Mick Grant possibly is the sixth place man. But that's the first three. As now Keith Hewan has a go on the inside. Up to Druids they come. They're on lap number six of this 20 lap race. Dennis Island going round the outside, but not quite. And it is Mick Grant is still holding on to that sixth place. But there's the first three, and the other two are closing up with them now. Cork Ballington and Steve Henshaw closing on the first three. Into the left hand of third gear, around about 80, 90 miles an hour. And it is still Ron Haslam from Keith Hewan, but Keith Hewan trying around the outside on the 500 Suzuki, but doesn't quite make it. Haslam leads from Hewan. Six laps they'll have completed when they cross the line. And uh, number 12, Dennis Island is still there, and Henshaw and Cork Ballington battling it out for fourth place, almost together as they cross the line. But Ballington, there they are. That's Haslam and Hewan. See Hewan, the back wheel leaped as he went over that little bump on Paddock Hill Bend. Haslam takes the wider line around Druids, and that seems to be the line for today. You see, Haslam has the big, heavier machine, but never underestimate him. Keith Hewan was desperate to uh, try and get in the World Suzuki team next year. I think uh, by his performance today, it looks like they've given him one of the, the special ones for the end of season meeting. But um, if, if he keeps his pressure up on Ron, he might wear him down and uh, we might see uh, an, a new winner. At the moment, though, it's Ron Haslam leading the championship and leading this final round. But Keith Ewan going on the inside this time. But not quite, I don't think. Does he? Across the line, side by side, and Ewan looks at Haslam and says, right, I've got the leader. Look at Ballington. Ballington up in third place. Keith Ewan now the leader. Second place is Ron Haslam. In third place is Cork Ballington, number eight. He's followed by Dennis Island, down to fourth place now. But it's Ewan from Haslam, Ballington. And then it was Ireland. Number two is the leader, 27, Henshaw is in fourth place. Dennis Ireland, oh, sorry, is in fourth place, and Henshaw is fifth. So, the leader now, they're coming in to complete lap number eight. The race leader is 16, Keith Ewan. And he's pulling ahead now from the rest of the pursuing field. Number two, Ron Haslam, then Cork Ballington, then it's Steve Henshaw, and then it's Dennis Ireland. That's second, third, fourth, and fifth. They're as close as that. 
and it's uh, number 16, Keith Ewan, who is starting to build up a lead. Well, Peter, I think you'll find Keith uh, will uh, tend to slow down a bit because it's really hard work on this uh, short hitting of the circuit to stay out in the lead and keep this pressure up. And you see, I, I think we're beginning to pull him back. I might be wrong. Well, it's, uh, that's the second, third, fourth place men. Ron Haslam, Cork Ballington, Steve Henshaw, who uh, was second in the 1981 British Championship, just finished. That's number 27, Steve Henshaw. Then it's uh, Dennis Ireland, number 12. That's the second, third, fourth, and fifth place men. And we've now completed lap number nine, almost half distance at the end of this lap, and it's still tremendous racing for the second, third, and fourth places, and Ballington has gone through into second place. Paul Ballington up into second place, and Henshaw, I think it is, that's gone ahead of Haslam as well. Well, Ron Haslam, as long as he keeps ahead of Wayne Gardner, he knows he's safe to win the championship. Wayne Gardner, incidentally, is lying in 11th position at the moment. Wayne Gardner in 11th place at the moment. But that's the second place man, the South African, Cork Ballington, the man who was double world champion in 1978 and 1979. And that was in 250 and 350 racing. He's now on the 500 Kawasaki. The 500 Kawasaki, and he's given it the best performances in world championship with two third places. Half distance is completed. Now, the leader, still number 16, Keith Ewan, half distance, 10 to go, and that's the battle for second, third, fourth, and fifth place. Cork Ballington for South African, Steve Henshaw from Jacksdale, followed by Ron Haslam from Langley Mill, and then the New Zealander, Dennis Ireland. Second, third, fourth, and fifth, Alain Druitt, and there's a man down. That was quite a spill, shows how tricky it is. It's Marc Fantin, the French champion, the man who won the French championship only last Sunday, and uh, that shows how tricky it is. And is he going to try and continue? He was holding on to sixth place, and indeed was closing on the fifth place man. He's perfectly okay, just uh, looks and checks, and he's back in the race. Back to second, third, and fourth now, and it's still South African Cork Ballington looking rather strange at the moment without his moustache. It's been shaved off, but uh, it doesn't have to reduce the wind resistance, he tells me. And he's holding on to second place on that 500 Kawasaki. Steve Henshaw is the second place man, and in third place is Ron Haslam. There's the leader, Keith Ewan, number 16, the British champion of 1979, and a man who had a tremendous result in the British Grand Prix, uh, in the Grand Prix World Championship Series in the 350 class, when he finished in second place. But I know his ambition is to ride in the 500 class. That's second, number eight, Cork Ballington. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. Fourth is quite happy for Ron Haslam, because as long as he's ahead of Wayne Gardner, he takes the championship. You know, I can't see Wayne Gardner quite catching uh, up the leaders here and winning the race, but he's doing fantastically well uh, in his position at the moment, considering it's his first time here. But uh, certainly Keith Hewing is showing us he has great potential and deserving of a Grand Prix machine for next year. It's not the easiest circuit, of course, to learn in uh, one uh, short practice session or a couple of short practice sessions this morning, but uh, he's riding pretty well, Wayne Gardner. Second, third, fourth, and fifth were on lap number 12 of this 20-lap event. And look at the angle there of Dennis Island, the knee almost on the ground. And Ballington now under pressure from Steve Henshaw, number 27, the runner-up in the British Championship this year. Ron Haslam back, as I say, from South Africa, where he scored a third and sixth place in the sunshine there only a couple of weeks ago. Ballington. And there's number 27, Henshaw, having a go at Ballington. Can he do it? Not this particular time, lapping at round about 50 seconds. The lap record is 48.8, so they're very close to it. Cork Ballington on the 500 Kawasaki, as I said, has given the Kawasaki 500 its best positions with third place twice in World Championship races this particular season. And already they're starting to pick up some of the tail enders. Steve Henshaw determined to get past Corky Ballington, and Ron Haslam holding on there. Cork Ballington seems to have the line pretty well through there. The uh, 1981 World 500cc champion Cork Ballington, who's just passing one of the uh, other riders, he finished overall in uh, eighth position in the World Championship 500, with third place, as I said, in Holland and Finland. Steve Henshaw, number 27, in third place, still holding on to that third place. Ron Haslam closing up, and Dennis Island is still there, and already the riders are being lapped. 
up to Druids now on the 15th lap. Around Druids safely. And there's the leader still, 16, Keith Ewan, lying third, he put third in the Motorcycle News Championship last season. This year, he's lying third in the 500cc Shell Sport Championship, uh, second in the British Grand Prix, as I said, and lying third, second in the 350 Riders Championship. So Keith Ewan, a man who's been knocking on the door, and we've got a new second place man, and Steve Henshaw's got through. Number 27, Henshaw is in second place. Eight, Court Ballington is in third place. Number two, Ron Haslam is fourth. And the fifth place man, that's the second place man now. The fifth place man is still Dennis Ireland, number 12. And completing the first six is number 10. Mick Brandt is in sixth place after Mark Fontan's spell. So 15 laps have been completed. We've just got five to go. Henshaw and Ballington. Five laps to go. Hewan, Henshaw, Ballington, Haslam, Ireland and Grant for first six with just five laps to go. And the tail end is now being gobbled up by the second, third and fourth place men. That's uh, Steve Henshaw taking the wide line at clearways. Uh, that's round about the fifth gear corner where they start reaching now to 140 miles an hour on top before breaking for paddock. And look at Ron Haslam. Ron Haslam is up into second place ahead of Henshaw and Ballington and Dennis Ireland. He was lying fourth. Suddenly, he's up to second place. And that's the difference a couple of tail enders could make. He had the right line, and he got through. They ran Druid safely. Down now to Graham Hill Bend, a left-hander at round about 90 miles an hour. So Rocket One has them pretty well assured of the championship. And he is lying in second place now with just a two or three laps to go. Number two, Ron Haslam. They're coming in to complete lap number 17, and there'll be three to go after this. Peter, Ron's going to have to go. Uh, he's going to catch the lead to Keith Hewitt now. He's pulled out to a very good lead, but I didn't expect Ron to hang around like that for very long. You know, it's not in his nature. He's a head down, flat out man. He is indeed, and uh, starting to lap more and more of these tail enders on the short circuit, the 1.2 miles, the 24 miles is the total distance. And uh, the leader, Keith Hewan lapping in just about 49.3 seconds, a half a second outside the overall record. That's the second place man on machine number two, Ron Haslam from Cork Barrington. Then it's Steve Henshaw, Dennis Ireland, and Mick Grant is the sixth place man still. But they're now approaching Clearways, third gear corner between 50 and 60 miles an hour. Ron Haslam, and then it's Corky Barrington, the South African. Ron Haslam, of course, the Derbyshire favourite from Langley Mill, uh, Nottinghamshire. Two laps to go, and that's the second place man. 18 laps completed, Keith Ewan still leads, and this is the battle still for second, third, and fourth place. And Ron Haslam, almost certain now of this championship, and it's a championship he's longed to win for a number of years. He was pipped, I remember, just a couple of years ago on the very last corner, the very last lap, and lost the championship by a meagre three points. That was all. Well, Ron Haslam can be ready to take that magnificent motorcycle new Superbike Championship trophy home with him tonight. He's in second place, and that's enough to give him the title without any doubt. Ron Clearways, and he's circulating there for the 18th time, coming in to complete lap number 19, and there's one lap to go when they cross the line this time. But that's still second, third, fourth, and fifth place, men. The leader, the second, third, and fourth place men sweep down into Paddock Bend, and that's the leader around Druids, and that's some idea of the lead that Keith Ewan has. Number 16, Keith Ewan from Wollaston, riding the 500 Suzuki, lying in fifth place in the championship uh, before this round, but this will certainly hoist him up the table with a 35-point total he's going to get for this victory. He's rounding clearways now for the 20th, and final time, and Keith Ewan is going to take this championship round, but not the overall. Number nine is Alex George, but that's the winner, 16. Keith Ewan, a victory for him, and who's going to be in second place? It's going to be Corky Ballington has got second place from Ron Haslam with Steve Henshaw in very close company. That's the second, third, and fourth place men. 
there's the winner of this particular round, Keith Ewans, second in the British 350 Championship, and uh, he has done himself a lot of good today here. Yes, a very decisive victory then for Keith Hewan on the Suzuki, getting 35 points. A marvellous battle for the positions behind him, but confirming in second place, Cork Ballington on the Kawasaki, getting 24 points. And Ron Haslam was third on the Honda, getting 20. And that means that Ron has claimed the title, the Motorcycle New Superbike champion, with 144 points at the end. 33 points clear of the man in second place, the South African Cork Ballington on the Kawasaki. And in third place, Wayne Gardner riding the Morawaki, who finished with 96 points. Can I give you just a rider who, of course, was...